Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time from Arthur. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, lists, topics, reactions, reviews, re-reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, uh, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under the video. Now, this is for the 1987 film Raising Arizona. And Raising Arizona is directed by the Cohen Brothers. It's the film they did after Blood Simple. And it's an entertaining movie. It's not my favorite Cohen Brothers film. That is easily The Big Lebowski, which I'm looking at the, the movie over there. I, just, I love The Big Lebowski. I think it's absolutely hilarious. I have the DVD. I don't have the Blu-ray, but yeah, I'm looking at the DVD over there. But Raising Arizona is fun. It has a it's a really really good visual aesthetics and camera work, definitely inspired by Sam Raimi's Evil Dead. I mean, there's literal shots that you would see in Evil Dead in this, with the camera, you know, going over, you going over cars or going up ladders to a woman who's screaming because her baby's been taped in or. During the foot chase where Nick Cage is being chased by the cops. Because he's just trying to get a pair of hoodies. And the way the camera is zooming around. I'm like, they definitely learned a thing or two from the San Raimi Evil Dead Club. It was kind of cool to see that implemented into a comedy movie. And the cast works well. You got Nick Cage as his career criminal. Keeps getting arrested. He falls in love with this cop. Played by Holly Hunter. Just a little desert flower. Each time he gets a parole. A few words are said. And the other person goes. Well, okay then. Well, okay then. You know and gets let go. The plot of the film is the two of them. They meet up. They fall in love. They get married. But then she can't have a kid. And they can't adopt. Because of his career background. In criminal activities he definitely made a career out of it so then one day they find that this family had about five or so kids and Holly Hunter's like you get me a toddler so he goes in and with some bumbling and fumbling gets a toddler to, to raise as their own meanwhile John Goodman and William Forsyth are criminals that are steep and they come across Nick Cage, who's a former buddy of theirs. Uh, Randall Tetz Cobb, who I remember from Uncommon Valor, among others. He's this, like, demonic, demonic bounty hunter, force of nature. Like, the whole movie is a live-action cartoon. I think even Simon Page said that. It's kind of like a Looney Tunes brought to life. I mean, Nick Cage... When he was interviewed years later, he said his thought process of his character was to play it as Woody Woodpecker. So if you watch Nick Cage, and the way he acts, and his hair, and he even has like a tattoo similar to... I mean, he's Woody Woodpecker. Without the... Uh, 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 you take that out. I, when I heard that in the interview, I'm like, fuck, now I do see the Woody Woodpecker in him. If Woody Woodpecker stole a baby and wanted to have a family. Oh, you kidding? We got a family here. Just his energy and just... Like, Nick Cage... Yeah, he made some bad films, but you know what? He takes a risk. And I think that's why Nick Cage is one of the more interesting actors of today. They're not all successes. But, man, he's willing... That way you get a Mandy... You did a Willy's Willy's Wonderland. This new one coming out where he plays himself looks interesting. Even some of his failures are at least somewhat interesting. I like Mom and Dad. Not everyone did, but I liked Mom and Dad for what it was. I mean, I find them more interesting than anything Stallone has done. Well, other than the Suicide Squad too, but I mean like. Aside from his voice. And I love Stallone. But Stallone. He doesn't. If he took a risk like Nick Cage. 
Like, if he did a Willy's Wonderland or Mandy, I think it would work out better. Uh, same with Van Damme, Arnold, all these guys. So Nick Cage, he definitely goes for the quirkiness. And, you know, that's why you get The Rock, you get Con Air, you get Bringing Out the Dead, 8mm, of you know, variety. And Nick Cage does a good job in this film. You know, John Goodman, Randall Tetz, uh, like, everybody does a good job. John Goodman, this is the first time we worked with the Cohen brothers. Of course, any time I see him, I think of Walter. Does he want to give a shit about the rules? Market Zero! Market Zero! God damn it, man. Why do you think everything about Vietnam? Well, it is kind of... No, it's fucking not, Walter. You fucking asshole. Yes, I'll see you later for practice. I didn't give you a toe, dude. I did give you a toe by 1.30, man. I'm sorry, I just, I love the Ben Lebowski. That's easily my top, probably my top five favorite comedies. I just love that film to death. But, getting back to this, it, it does feel like a live action cartoon. It has that energy with the camera work. The, the unique score with the yodeling. It actually makes yodeling work and not annoying. When the towels come up, I'm not going to try to yodel because I don't want to burn people's ear holes. But when the opening credits and yodeling, I'm like, okay, it, it, in this format, in this way, it fits. Now, maybe I didn't find the film as funny as other people may have to be. Because there was a lot of times I was just, oh, you know, belly laughs and all. But it was, I was still entertained by Nick Cage's character and the cast doing their jobs well. The, like I said, the, the camel work style, its uniqueness. And then, like, when he steals the hoodies, the diapers, and the cops chasing them and it's going through all this stuff and the camera's following it. And again, it's like Evil Dead type of camel work. There were moments that did make me chuckle, like Nick Cage and John Grumman having this fight in the, the trailer. And as they're doing the fight, they keep fucking up the environment. So, like, Nick Cage tries to put his hands up, but it scrapes the, the top. I've done that before, I will admit. I've done that before, so I know how that goes. Where you're doing something, and, like, the ceiling has kind of... I don't know what you call rough, but they have a uh, certain sort of grain to the ceiling. When you do that, it scrapes you like, ah. So I, was like, I sympathize with Nick Cage in that. And then John Grumman's trying to punch, but he actually punches a piece of the wall out. John Grumman and William Forsyth, they take the baby and. They want to care for it and go on their rounds. And then they keep accidentally losing the baby. Where's Junior? Ah! Like, John Goodman and Will Forsythe, they definitely... They know what kind of movie it is. And they're having fun with the proceedings. You never leave a man behind! Like I said, it, it wasn't as hilarious as... I did like the Big Lebowski. It wasn't as funny to me. Uh, I did think there were moments of slow spots. The stuff between Nick Cage and Holly Hunter. Funny enough, after the initial beginning, Holly Hunter kind of... I liked her as an actress. Her tender didn't really do much for me for a good chunk of it, other than being kind of a... Uh, bitchy in a way I want that toddler go give me that toddler I don't want your friends here let the friends leave you know get your friends out of here kind of a stick in the mud because the only other part I remember of Holly Hunter is when the bounty hunter Randall Tess Cobb is going to get the baby and she's walking up and she says you give me that baby back you wore hard from hell. 
So, Dean, I would say after the initial beginning, and then after that foot chase of trying to steal the diapers, the movie seems to slow down a little bit for me. Although I'm still enjoying seeing John Goodman. Well, to John Goodman, I loved ever since I saw Ride to Phobia. I do remember him from the TV show Roseanne. William Forsyth. Interesting to see him play this type of character because it's less intimidating compared to usually he's the main villain and Steven Seagal's Out for Justice or and Stone Cold or Brian Bosworth and, and other movies. So it's nice to see him play a little bit more of a goofy role. But again, there's sort of such in the film. I'm like, okay, you know, kind of watch it as a time waster. But then we get the the just crazy finale, where it's Nick Cage trying to deal with this Randall Ted's cover. I just I like the music. I don't know how to describe the music, but it definitely. It was his own unique music during that scene that you didn't really hear any other parts of the movie. And being very cinematic in the camera work. Nick Cage is getting the shit kicked out of him. But then he's able to get the grenade and he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, ultimately they do return the, the baby... And there's doubts if their marriage is going to work. And the, the guy, the father of the kid says, well, I don't know, it'd be a shame if it didn't work out. Because I love my wife a lot. And then it ends with some dreams. And I don't know, a lot of people like this ending. Spoiler alert. I just with me in the ending, I get what it's trying to do. Like, it's the case dreaming about the stuff that will happen. That kid will grow up to be a you know, football star. John Goodman and William Forsyth just willingly went back to prison because they were not ready to come out yet. Them as being old and having a bunch of kids and grandkids. But I don't know, for me, I guess I took it in a different way. I kind of took it in a way of it just seemed like a very, like a foolhardy, bittersweet dream where it's still a dream, so who knows if this will actually happen. It's like there's, I guess, him hoping. But I mean, it's not really, for me, a confirmation of even if their marriage is still going to be together. Because it's not like a final moment where they have a conversation or they have a talk or they hug or. There's never any final nice sweet moments between Holly Hunter and Nick Cage. Like in the real world. I'm not talking about the dream. And like well how would they get kids? Because again she can't have a kid. She's barren. He can't adopt the kid because he's still a convict. That was what brought them to this predicament in the first place. So I guess at the end of the film, I'm like, well, nothing really got better. Things just got worse. And the fact of, you know, they were they loved each other at the beginning. Now when they're in bed, I did. They were talking about getting divorced, and I did. There's no final moment where. They forgive each other or they talk to each other. I don't know, just... The the fact that you don't really have any of that actual finality. And then it's all done with these dreams. And I guess we're supposed to interpret that these dreams will just become real. Even though I'm like, well... They are still dream. I don't know. It's, it's supposed to symbolize something. I guess I wanted less symbolism and more actual meet and merit at least to me so I don't know like the ending like even like the big Lebowski like with the 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 ashes getting on the dude and then you know the dude getting pissed off and then they kind of stop and they're both hugging let's go bull dude 
Like, even that has a bit of a more finality. And then, like, with Sam Elliott having some words with the dude. Like, that, even that little bit was just more of a final dot. Like, this, uh, the whole dream thing, just, a lot of people loved it. It just wasn't for me. Overall, it is a wacky, interesting, like I said, live-action cartoon the, the the foot chase scene where the cops chase after him. He's got the pantyhose over his head. He's trying to steal diapers and going in and out. Like I said, very nice visceral camera work. Because for those I say he learned... People might not know that the Coen brothers worked on Evil Dead. Like, I think it was like editing. And in fact, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi helped them shoot the trailer. If you find a trailer to Blood Simple... There's a teaser, I should say, a teaser, where it's like a car on a road, and you have the camera going, like it was the evil force and evil dead, and it's like going towards the car. Technically, it really has nothing to do with the actual movie Blood Simple, but it was a teaser to get people intrigued, and if you type in Blood Simple teaser, and you see this point of view of the camera going towards a car... That was helped shot by Sam Raimi and, and Bruce Campbell and them helped shoot that trailer. Because then the Coen Bros worked, I think, on the editing. Like, they're in the credits of Evil Dead. So it's nice that they took that knowledge and applied it into... And it's definitely more effective comedy than when Sam Raimi tried to do Crime Wave. Which I didn't hate Crime Wave, but I would say this one... Is definitely more satisfying, at least in terms of certain sections like that foot chase with the diapers and the the cast that they got together with that, and Nick Cage's performance just being wacky but not annoying. Which has a family here. He's just like doing the best that he can and just way over his head. He like when he's battling with Randall Tess Cobb, just way over his head. Just getting the shit ticked out of him, and like I said, getting that little bit of lucky business. And there's other funny moments. There's a bit with the John Goodman and William Force are trying to rob Freeze and get down on the ground. And the one guy's like, Well, which is it, son? Is it freeze or get on the ground? Because if I freeze, I can't move. But if I get on the ground, just get on the ground, just, just do it. And it is nice to appreciate when a movie's trying to do something a bit more unique and not so typical. While, again, I don't think it's the funniest movie ever compared to other people. It's not my favorite Coen Brothers film. Again, that's the big Lebowski. It's still entertaining. Still entertaining, still worth a watch for anyone who's seen it, or who hasn't seen it. And, I mean, while I do have issues, it is still a, a interesting movie, at, to say the least. I mean, you need score. When you're able to get yodeling in there and it's not making my ears bleed, there's some credit to be had to be put into it. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.